So we had a chance to see their their compression model, their rack model. Now let's talk about your gas cooler and let, kind of explain the process because in refrigeration, standard refrigeration, you don't often see adiabatic cooling. Can you explain how this works? Yeah, absolutely. So when you have your gas cooler, your, the main idea is you want to optimize uh, the exchange between the outside air and the refrigerant that you want to cool. So uh, one way to optimize it is to have uh, here what we call an adiabatic pad. So the idea is you have some water that will um, wet here yep. the media. And so the air go coming through will almost get saturated in water. Yeah. And then this water will be evaporated yeah. on the fins of the cooler in order to optimize the heat transfer between the refrigerant and the outside water. Okay, so, and my understanding with this, you need to really understand the system because now we're adding a new component to it. So there's a little bit more maintenance I hear. So what is the process on how it actually works? I'm assuming there's a solenoid that we'll call depending on what the ambient temperature is and the humidity? Exactly. The idea is that you have a controller that will regulate the flow of water yeah. and they will uh, optimize the, the flow in order to more or less saturates the, the air of, with water in order to optimize yeah. the exchange. So depending on the outside condition, when it's really cold outside, you will not need it. Yep. And when the temperature rises, your flow of water will be optimized by the controller in order to uh, give you all the time the best performances. Yeah. And this is what's really cool about it because in high ambient, a lot of people are like, oh, we can't do CO2, it's in South Africa, it's in the warmest parts of the US, you can't do CO2 because it's really uh, inefficient. But with technology like this, this is what makes it more efficient. And this is why CO2 can be in the hottest parts of the world. One thing you need to be uh, understand with this technology, there's maintenance. So when you're designing a system that has adiabatic cooling, you have to think about how long these pads are going to last and put that in your maintenance plan just so you understand you're providing the right product for your customers. What is the, the life expectancy for the pads? So the pads you can uh, you, and you need to clean them. So you can clean them with clear water in order to to remove dust and everything that will yeah. accumulate. And we estimate that uh, with a, a, a maintenance we can go up to let's say five years. Five years, okay. But that's with maintenance now. So make sure it's very important to do your maintenance. And we talk about this all the time. And refrigeration maintenance is so important. So that reduces all your service calls when you do good maintenance. And so when you're cleaning them, I don't assume you would take a pressure washer no, and pressure washer. Not. Yeah, so you would take regular water, probably a hose, and just wash all the dust off. Because once again, if this gets all plugged up, you will not be able to get the air through. Exactly. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you got something out of it, something that you can use in your daily life. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, and click the bell button because when you do click the bell button, it will notify you anytime new videos are released. Also, check out the Refrigeration Mentor webpage at refrigerationmentor.com where I'll have all the different trainings, upcoming events, the different podcasts I've been on, as well as the Refrigeration Mentor podcast. If you want to check that out on Apple, Spotify, Google, any service provider of your choice. Super excited to see you at the next video. Now let's get a conversation going.